Today on The Reefer, we're going to look at the equipment that runs the 93 gallon reef tank. Hi guys, Yifeng here with The Reefer. Welcome to a two part series where in part one, we are going to look at the 93 gallon reef tank and all the equipment it takes to keep the reef tank running and all the coral alive. And in part two of this series, we're going to look at the livestock that's currently in the reef tank as well as the livestock that's currently in quarantine. So before I forget, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell because you don't want to miss part two of this series. So off the bat, we're going to start off with the tank. It's 30 inches wide by 30 inches deep and 24 inches tall, giving it a total capacity of 93 gallons. Next, we'll look at what's in the tank. There is a little heater there, just in case my return pump ever fails. That heater will keep the temperature in here rather constant. And I've also got three G-Bio power heads in this tank. Now the ones on the left and the right are SW8s and they are running on random mode. The one in the back is an RW20 pointed straight down, running at one power and on wave one mode. And the reason the RW20 is pointed straight down is because if it was pointed in any other direction, water would go flying everywhere. Next, we'll look at the lights. So there are three LEDs that power this tank. The first LED being the A360, which came in my initial purchase of this tank. Next, on Boxing Day, I got a Prime HD over here, which is a white. And finally, about two months ago, I got a smoking deal on an AP700 and it was brand new. So behind these lights, you're also going to notice that I have an HOB skimmer. This is an Aquamax HOB 1.5. And the reason that I have a hang on back skimmer instead of a skimmer in my sump is because I built my tank too low. I am a good husband. Now guys, if you've made it to this point, make sure you tickle that subscribe button because you don't want to miss part two of this series. Next off, we're going to look at the shelf where all the power comes from. So I have a backup power supply, which I got from Amazon. And to that, I have connected a power head and the heater in the main tank. So my main concern is the main tank. If anything happens to the sump, well, I can replace anything in there. There's no coral in there. But if I lose the main tank, um, that's going to cost a lot of money to replace. Next, I have my Apex Junior. And the Apex Junior serves two functions. The first being for temperature control. It has its own temperature probe, which I have connected uh, I've also connected a heater to the apex. So the apex ensures that the, the temperature stays within 76.5 and 77.5. So next, the apex also controls these 1.1 ml uh, per minute dosers. Now these are knockoffs of the BRS dosers, uh, Canadian knockoffs that are um, from a local store up here. Uh, you can see that they are light blue instead of a black. And what I dose is deionic two part. And I also have down here my Tunzi auto top off. Now this came with my, um, my initial purchase of the tank as well. And I'm really glad I have it because I would probably not spend the money to buy an auto top off otherwise. And the auto top off is one of the greatest things that I have going uh, for the tank. So over on the right side of the tank, I have a five gallon bucket. And in that bucket, you can tell that my auto top off water has Kalkwasser in it. So I have been running Kalkwasser for about eight months. I really like it for its ability to keep my elk and calcium up as well as its ability to keep my pH 
a little higher. So, oh, sorry. I didn't introduce my cardboard doors for my sump. I mean, for my stand. So this is a stand that I built myself because my other stand that I bought could not fit into this room. Well, it could not fit through my doorways. So as you can see, I do use cardboard. Um, it's cheap, it's effective, and it keeps the light in the stand and I can just fling it. So down here I have a 26 gallon trigger system sump. Uh, I apologize, it's really dirty and you probably can't see much from it, but I can tell you that there is a filter sock in there and it is running carbon. I am running carbon in that filter sock. So the whole reason I have carbon is because I do have some softies in the tank and softies do practice chemical warfare. So I would rather use the carbon to remove whatever chemicals they're um, releasing into the water instead of allowing those chemicals to inhibit the coral growth. Down in my sump, you also notice that I have four types of macroalgae. That is grape calorpha, chitomorphia, um, feather calorpha, as well as I believe it's dragon's breath, but I'm not sure. It's a red type of macro. And then finally, I do have this canister, which has GFOs, GFO in it. Um, it's not currently running because I think my phosphates are under control and there really isn't any livestock in the tank right now. Oh, and the last thing I have is a GBAL return pump. I believe it's a GBAL 8000 or 8500. It is a DC pump and it's silent. It's pretty much silent. I, I don't think I've ever heard it. The other thing about DC pumps is I can control exactly how much flow I want to come out of the pump. So in reality, in this one loop system, I really didn't have to install um, these gate valves. But um, anyways, hindsight's 2020. And that is pretty much my, the equipment that runs this 93 gallon cube tank. So guys, please, if you've made it to this point, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'd really appreciate it even more if you kicked that subscribe button in the face. So please kick it in the face and hit that notification button so you don't miss part two of this series.